if the Dane doesn't win player of the season this year, someone has f***ed him. You had to take that out, huh? Who's gonna be the worst dress? Is it Chum? Is it uh, next to Pontus. <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, Ivan will show up with something that's not suited for when I watch it. Uh, I'll watch it, yes. Oh, right. I agree. Pontus or Chris Noga? One of those. Brian. <laughs> impossible, impossible. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, candidates for this one. It might be Rico. Yeah, Rico Henry. Where's just probably Chris Noga? <laughs> Vitaly is one of them, Pontus is 100% one of them. Okay, Chris Aya might be the worst because uh, I know for a fact that he doesn't do shopping by himself. He just doesn't care, so Chris Aya. I'm gonna give it to Christopher Arja. The Scandinavians will come classy except Pontus. And what was the next question? Obviously me, one person only. Not Christian Noga, no chance. Nothing new. Yeah. Say Jonas, you know. Really? Yeah, it's got to be. So there's a few candidates. Best dress, and I can say myself. I'm gonna say myself. <laughs> it's a difficult one. Yeah. I would leave it no comment. <laughs> can I say myself? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'll stick with myself. Probably Rico Henry. He, he, can't, he can't talk, and if he does, it's a come from power and it's hard to understand him. Uh, Pez, he goes up, innit? Uh, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're right. I think it will don't be. Don't say that, because yeah. you, know, you know that I've said yeah. it. So, Rico, Stu said <laughs> you'd be the one. <laughs> I don't think Nerd will have a good speed. I think it will get very emotional. And you will struggle with your English. That can happen. <laughs> you can happen for everyone, huh? Rico. Rico, 100%. You got any other hands down, yeah. Teach us a bit. Oh, I think you're just looking over your shoulder close there. <laughs> of course. No, no, maybe. <laughs> Say Mads, one of the Mads. Yeah, yeah Mads Beck or Mads Rosa, one of them. Uh, Christian Norgard. <laughs> I would say Christian Norgard. <laughs> you will win a lot of awards. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Chris. <laughs> That's what we needed. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our hostess this evening, Natalie Sawyer. Here she comes. Hello, right, guys. Oh, that's true. Thanks, Peter. Oh, that's true. Sorry, I am here as well, if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> A very good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome to our Player of the Year live show, which is brought to you by Blue Jeans by Verizon, coming to you live from our host, Sky. A warm welcome to everyone here and to the 5,000 or so of you watching from over 25 countries around the world. Sit back, relax, pour yourself something nice for what should be an exciting evening. Get on this, Nat, 10 what? seconds in. We've already won ourselves an award, Sports Organisation of the Year at the Sports Industry Awards. Get to stay this home, yeah, John? Yeah? No, he's nodding, he's nodding. <laughs> he's all right with that. Uh, it's a less traditional award show tonight, but still a chance to celebrate the last nine months. And by celebrate, we mean more like Christopher Adja celebrating tackles, less Saman Godos, where is he, celebrating goals. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself tonight, Saman. This isn't the Oscars. But what a season it has been. It all started on a Friday night in front of a global audience. 74 long years, and it was worth the wait. Some of the highlights then. Wiesa had his own goal of the season competition. 
Pontus finally scored. Finally. We beat the World Club champions. Plenty of last minute winners. Fans were back in record numbers with Woody leading the way. And who knew Free From Desire would become a new favourite of ours. Brentford B got back out on tour, beating Bromby in the Atlantic Cup as one of their memorable moments. As well, of course, as winning the London Senior Cup. After winning promotion, the Brentford women's first team broke their attendance record and the B team have a cup final to look forward to this weekend. So there's lots to toast tonight and we've got six awards culminating in the big one. Supporters Player of the Year. We'll also be chatting to members of the first team throughout as well as the award winners. And later on, Pontus and Thomas will be answering your questions. Stick them in the Q&A section on the right-hand side and we'll ask some of them later on. Right, I want you to cast your minds back to the 13th of August 2021. The curtain raiser for the Premier League season. The first game back with full stadiums. The sun was shining, the stage was set. The world was watching and this was our time. Only sport, only sport with people can make you feel like this. Can make them down beneath feel like this. Welcome back to the real thing. The real thing. That's how football sounds. This is how it looks and feels. Here's Sochi Kados! The first strike of the Premier League season is the sting of a killer bee. To the near post, Kados goal! What a night in West London. Thomas, Frank and Brentford are back in the big time for the first time in 74 years and the bees have stunned the Gunners on the opening night of the 30th Premier League season. Zaha against Ayer.
it just on. Oh, and it's deflected in. And Brentford hit the front again. And this topsy turvy showdown at St James's takes yet another twist. Proper goosebump stuff that, and these two were right in amongst it. One got the ball rolling on that Friday night, and the other has become an instant fan favourite. They're also two of the smiliest people I think I've ever met in my life. Give a big round of applause to Johan Wister and Sergi Canos, everyone. I'm glad you smiled when I said that. Um, Johan, I'm going to start with yourself. What was it like watching that back? Honestly, uh, I feel so proud because uh, it's been a long journey from uh, I start younger to now. It's a bit um, a dream to be here, honestly. And um, I feel so proud and I will say thank you to everyone. Help me to be good, feel good here. And, um, and hopefully uh, the goal of the year. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but you've got early. You think you've already got goal of the year wrapped up. Um, so you've spoken before about how you've grown up with Brentford. So was this extra special for you in not only returning to the Premier League, having made that appearance before, but you're a fan, you're a Brentford fan like us. So was it extra special? I mean, yeah, it was special. Uh, you know, to, we were watching uh, goals in the Premier League. We play in Premier League football. And, uh, you know, when I came here on loan, when I was 18 years old, I would have never imagined that we will be sitting here now talking about this, you know, and this is everyone, you know, everyone in this room uh, deserves this because the way uh, this club have grown up, you know, like uh, being in the championship and then promoting to the Premier League and staying in the Premier League the way we've, we've done, I think it's, it's amazing. Definitely, it's a lot to be proud of and you've also scored some amazing goals in your Brentford career. You've scored some emotional goals. Um, so where does that one rank on the opening day of the season? Well, I think uh, I think it's the best the best goal I've ever scored at the moment. You know, I think it, for how what it means what it means for you know for me best, uh, the first Premier League goal and for the club and I think it's it's up there. You know, one yeah. of the best. Did, didn't you hurt your knee as well as you? They are still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, Johan thinks you've got this sewn up already, but let's, let's see what you think, Sergio. You are going head-to-head -head for goal of the season a bit later. It is a bit unfair, Johan, because you've done your own, like you say, you've got about eight in there, I think. <laughs> um, who's going to win? Do you think you've got it sewn up? Which one? I don't know. But... Oh, I've just got so many, you know, don't worry about it. No, honestly, um, more particularly, I think it's against Oldham. Yeah. But... Uh, Oh, I feel proud and very, uh, <coughs> I think he's Liverpool for me. Yeah. yeah. Sergio, who do you think is winning goal of the season? For me, Vida uh, against uh, Chelsea, the chip. It's, yeah. It was, uh, and you know, Stamford Bridge beating Chelsea 4-1. Yeah. I think it's, for me, it's Vida. <laughs> oh, he says thanks. Um, yeah, man, you also, you love a celebration. Um, for people that don't know, what is, I'm calling it the Wissa all about? Um, it means like, uh, you know, you don't know how to, what happened in your life, what happened to your family. You have just to be focused, just love, love your family, chill, and um, work hard because uh, you, you didn't know what happened in your life. So be focused on your way and uh, hopefully uh, every day you will be better in your life. So it means like that, just focus and go in. Well, you've scored 10 goals in your first season with us, iconic celebrations, last minute winners. You've become a cult hero with the fans already and you've got your own song and the song goes off. Look at this after the Burnley game. I think this was with you on the pitch in front of the West Ham. We've got it here. How does that make you feel watching this back? Whistles on fire. I look stupid, like. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you didn't realise they were singing Whistles on Fire though, did you, for a while? No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't realise, but I feel proud because, you know, like, it's for the fans, 
because without without them, there is no show, no no entertainment. So I need to feel that with them because uh, if I feel love, I will be better on the pitch. Well, Sergi, you yourself have got a strong bond with, with the supporters. Uh, it feels I don't know if it was because of the time we had apart, but it feels there's a real close bond between the club and the supporters right now. Yeah, I think I I think it's the way we are as a team and and the way. This club is run. It's it's like a family, you know. And I think uh, all the fans uh, can feel that, and that's why they they feel so close to us, because we we are like them, you know. Yeah. And it's easy to forget that last year we didn't we didn't have the supporters. So how amazing has it been for you to have them back, full houses every week, and and travelling so well away from home as well? Well, we've we've missed it a lot. I think uh, I think last year. Uh, there were some games that we needed them, you know, you need that extra something, you know, from the fans. They, they, we always say that they play a huge part in, in, our, in our game because when they are on fire, we are on fire <laughs> at home. So <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's important that, they, they, that we can feel them and uh, hopefully we can improve, uh, keep going in this uh, relationship. Certainly right, and we're certain you are on fire. Right, it is time for our first award of the evening. But first, give it up for Johan Wissert and Sergi Canos, everyone. Uh, let's, let's get things going then with the Women's Team Awards. Over to you, Natalie. Thank you very much. Now, as we mentioned earlier, this season has been a record-breaking one for the women's first team as they set their highest record attendance with over a 1,000 fans, turning up to see them win 7-2 against London Benfica in March. Just last week, they visited Jersey Road to have a coaching session with Thomas Frank, who put both squads through their paces ahead of the B-Team's Cup final. It is a former Brentford defender who is charged with managing the team. Please welcome to the stage Carly Osborne. <laughs> reception there from your team yeah, you bonded awesome. well with them yeah, yeah I paid them for that one to be fair <laughs> tell us about what this season's been like promotion uh, you know how well have you adjusted to this new league um, it's been wonderful to be fair uh, obviously getting promoted we did, wasn't quite sure you know what the league was going to be like but the girls have been unbelievable this season they really have they've, um, they've smashed it this year put in really good performances um, taking everything on board and, and put it on the pitch which is what we want yeah I mentioned the record attendance against London Benfica. How special a game was that for you all? Yeah, it was. It was a special moment for everyone involved. Um, I think, obviously, for the, for the ladies, it was extremely special for them. Biggest crowd that they've played in front of. So, you know, to go and put on a show like they did, I'm extremely proud. And I know everyone else was extremely proud as well. And I know, what, is it three B-team players that made the step up into the first team? Yeah. We always talk about pathway. How important is that with the women's team? Yeah, extremely important. Um, you know, we want to bring players through and we want to, we want to make sure we're producing good players and, and that's what's happening with the B team and, and coming to join the first team and we need to keep pushing every player. So, you know, it's a competitive environment, but um, the girls are stepping up. And I mentioned Thomas Frank putting the girls through the paces during a training session. How beneficial was that to everybody? And, and also that link up between the men's and the women's team, how important is that? Yeah, it was massively beneficial. Thomas is an unbelievable manager, as we all know. Um, and for the girls to be in that environment and, and have Thomas take a session for them was, was wonderful. They were, they were buzzing after that session and it was, it, was, um, it was a little bit emotional for me to see them so happy and, and enjoy and know how much that meant for them. So I, I thank Thomas for that. Um, but that's what we want. We want to bring things closer together and, and you know, we are one club and we're all on, on the same direction. We want to go in the same direction. Okay. Carly, for now, may I have the mic? Thank you very much. It is time for us to reveal our first winners of the evening, the Brentford women's first team, and also B team players of the season. And join us to present the awards from our platinum partner, Utilita Energy, Billy Taylor. I don't know where to start, Natalie. Is it B team or first no, team? Go with the go with triple. Go with the float. Okay. So uh, the women's B team player of the year is Cara Graham. Cara. There you go. 
Would you announce the first team as well, please? I will. And the first team women's player of the year is Emily Boycott. <laughs> difficult because you've got very big trophies in your hand but Cara I'll come to you um, you only joined what in the summer is yeah. that right and you have gone on to make some standout performances so how special is this award for you uh, it's amazing it's definitely something that I wasn't expecting at all but <laughs> well, like with the help of the management and all the girls have welcomed me so easily and so it was like amazing so I was able to settle in quite quickly and yeah, I'm just grateful for everyone who's been involved, who's been able to welcome me in so greatly, yeah. And I mentioned you're the, you're the B team winner, but you have played in the first team yeah. as well. So what was, what was that experience like? Uh, it was definitely nerve wracking first, first doing it, because uh, you know, as being uh, with so many experienced players who have been there for so long, but again, everyone who I was playing with was so welcoming and, they calmed my nerves and I was just able to, you know, play my football and do as best I can, so yeah. And let's come to you, Emma, you obviously are the, the first team women's player of the season. How, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's something that I never expected. I've played for a few teams and never got the chance to get an award like this, so it's definitely very special. And how's your season gone? What, what stands out for you performance-wise? Um, to be fair, to be probably the B team performance that I was in a couple of weeks ago, we played in the um, semi-final won on penalties and made my first penalty save as a um, in a competitive match, which was really good for me, really exciting. So, um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Were you involved in the London Benfica game? I was involved in it, yeah. It was a great experience. You know, I've never played in a crowd that big. You know, probably a couple of hundred people is probably the biggest crowd mm -hmm. we've ever had. So to have over a thousand was just an amazing feeling. Brilliant. Well, richly deserved for both of you. Round of applause, will you, for our winners, <laughs> Emily Boycott and Cara Graham. Utilitarian Billy Taylor and to the women's head coach Carly Osborne. We're going to move on to our third award of the evening now, which centres on the men's B team. They have travelled to Portugal, Cyprus, Spain, and Monaco this season, and they've also faced teams like Bromby, AS Monaco, Chelsea, and Crystal Palace, to name but a few. And let's not forget, just last month they celebrated Cup success. possibly just won this game for Brentford oh, FC. Brentford, Brentford B are in the final of the Middlesex FA Senior Challenge Cup. Launched in for Don, and in to the goal. Well, it took a while to bounce in, but it's in. And it's Nico Jones, and it's 1 1 in the cup final. Listen, I've been here before, use the experience, win the cup. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. 
and Trevitt scores the opening penalty. If it goes 2-0 here, it's a big advantage for the Bees. And he scores. And Miles Pert Harris now could win it for the Bees. And he does. It's 3-0, it's all over. And Brentford's B team have captured the London FA Senior Cup trophy. Well, the 40-game season has come to an end, and it's been quite a season, reaching two cup finals and bringing one of those trophies home, winning the London Senior Cup for the first time since 1898. Give a warm welcome to the B-team head coach, Neil McFarlane. Goodness me, it's a season that's got lots of amazing moments in it. It's been another great and, and beneficial, beneficial season, no doubt. Without doubt, I think first and foremost seeing the players give that level of commitment every single day on the training ground and, and the way our staff push them uh, to improve them, that's that's a real highlight, watching them that grow that every day. And then, like you said, to be involved in so many really exciting games this season, no more so than being invited to the Atlantic Cup for a B team against first team opposition uh, and being invited back next year. We want to keep improving all the time. and. And that game against Bromby that you mentioned was, without doubt, one of the highlights of the season. We obviously know that you won the London Senior Cup. I guess what I want to know is how beneficial, how important is it that players learn to win and win trophies? Yeah, listen, first and foremost, concentrating on the performance and from the training ground onto the pitches and, and into the variety of matches that we have is, is fantastic. But yeah, listen, when they go to first team, they've got to win. So we, we drive that into them as well. And, and to see them suffer the disappointment of losing a penalty show in the first cup, to then use that experience in the second one and win 3 nothing, it was, it was really pleasing. And you played teams from all over, Denmark, Cyprus, France. How important is it to play against teams from different leagues, to learn different styles? Yeah, like I said, that variety of games. And, and obviously, we were, sadly, with COVID, the, the previous season, that stopped us going in tours, but to have the tours back this year, you know, going to Spain, to Cyprus, to Portugal, playing Monaco like you've seen on the screen there, it's hugely beneficial to the young players and, and I think they'll have benefited a lot from the tours coming back and all the other games that we've played this year. And we have seen some debutants in the Premier League this season, Finn Stevens, Nathan Young Coombs making their first bows in, in the top flight of football. How important is that to see that great work that you're doing coming to fruition and, and making their first team debuts as such? It's not, it's not just our work, it's the players' work. You know, They're the ones that, that go on the grass every single day looking to improve. And the levels that our first team are playing at is nothing sort of sensational. So we've got to keep raising the bar to, to get them to that position. But yeah, it was pleasing. To obviously, Finn played against Southampton away and then and then Nathan coming on there in recent weeks. It's, it's really, really encouraging. Yeah, and, and just lastly, we'll have to have a word on your assistant, if you don't mind, Sam Saunders, who is much loved by all Brentford fans for what he did on the pitch. What's he like as a coach off it? I'm sure fans want to know. I think he's just first and foremost a fantastic assistant to myself. You know, I, I didn't know Sam when I came to the club three years ago and we met him in the, in the Novotel and, and I can't thank him enough for the, the level of assistance he's gave me over the years, as all the staff. You know, the staff have been phenomenal the B team through the hard times, like I mentioned with COVID and into this season. And, and hopefully we keep flourishing as a B team and, and keep seeing, most importantly, our first team keep going strength to strength. Well, Neil, it's been a great season. Thank you very Thank you. much. So, it is time to announce the winner of the Brentford B Team Player of the Year and to help us do that from club partner Pension B, Jasper Martins. Well, the B Team Player of the Year is... Nathan Young Coombs. Now, before we have a chat, let's see exactly why you've won this award.
<laughs> it's, it's been a great season, Nathan. What have you made of it? Uh, no, it's been a good uh, season. Lots of goals and... Uh, <laughs> Lots, uh, yeah. No, but I think I've uh, progressed as a player much before uh, the start of the season. So just keep on, keep on uh, good stead until the end of the season. 34 goals, is that right? Yeah, not too shabby, not, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Could have been more, but... Giving Ivan and Brian a run for their money. <laughs> and Johan as well, mustn't forget them. What's it been, though, the experience like playing for the for the B team? You sort of are suggesting that you've really improved, you feel, over this, this whole season. Uh, yeah, no, 100%, I think, over the course of uh, the whole season, uh, from where I was when I met Sorns and uh, Neil to where I am now, obviously, with a Premier League debut, lots of goals, been... <laughs> Uh, really good performances. I think it shows the work that we do day in, day out, and it's led us to here. Let's talk about that first team debut, if you don't mind. You played against Southampton a couple of weekends ago. How did you feel when you found out you are going to play a part in that game? Uh, well, it wasn't uh, expected, uh, to say the least. Uh, uh, I was obviously on the bench, and uh, next thing I know, uh, the game was kind of closing out, and then <laughs> I thought, oh, Potentially it could be, it could, uh, or just carry on working. But Brian said three minutes and then <laughs> I was like checking my shoulders if he was speaking <laughs> to me. But uh, no, quickest warm up ever and uh, yeah, onto the pitch. Had, and with the nerves, was your heart going or were you just raring and ready uh, to go? To be fair, where, where it happened so quick, I didn't feel like I didn't really get money to uh, take a second to take it all in. So like it was just, Get, get onto the pitch as quick as possible and try and get as long on the pitch as possible. And it was just, yeah, mm. crazy. And what did you make of that first experience playing in the Premier League? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's hard to put into words. It's <laughs> hard to put into words. Like, uh, you've always kind of dreamed to play a part in the Premier League and to do it, obviously, I've got on with everyone so well here. It makes that kind of moment just a little bit more special. So. So now you've got the taste of it. Next season, what's your aim? Uh, just more and more, just more and more, just see what uh, heights I can achieve and just, like I said, keep on going forward and that'll be it. Everybody, the B Team Player of the Year, Nathan Young -Poon. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Neil McFarlane and also very, very much thank you to Jasper Martins from Pension B. Let's get back to our season review, shall we? And the winter saw players returning from injuries. There were last-minute winners. Ivan scored his first Premier League hat-trick. And the spotlight was on the club during the January transfer window. I wonder why. Brentford had a Premier League debut to on-loan Alvaro Fernandez in goal with David Raya ruled out for four to five months with a knee injury. Players and fans both thought there was a high boot inside the penalty area. And the penalty is given. Fans draw their collective breath. Tony sends Pinford the wrong way. A cathartic moment for him. He's finally off and running on home soil in the Premier League. And Brentford lead Everton by a goal and L. Dean with the ball in. Rondon on the turn. That's a fine stop. Resolutions around these parts for Brentford, it will just be a case of keep doing what you've been doing. Ruslev and Wissa! Oh, glorious! Absolutely terrific from Johan Wissa. The first genuine sight of Aston Villa's goal. And Wissa makes it count. Matisse and Ruslev.
returns to the Premier League after injury for the first time since October. And a fairy tale return to football has been confirmed because Brentford have signed Christian Eriksen. He's back in the Premier League. Christian Eriksen making his competitive return to action and just listen to the reception. Two teams promoted from the Championship at the end of last season with Norwich City hosting Brentford at Carrow Road. in the corner. I can't believe Pontus finally scored and we tried to give it to Charlie Good. Sorry, Pontus, mate. It's not my fault. Anyway, sat next to me now are two players who, to be honest, I'm not sure which one's got the better passing range. One wears the gloves and the other has fit like a glove since his arrival. Give it up for Christian Eriksen and David Rea, everyone. <laughs> David, I'm going to start with yourself. Uh, it's been an absolutely unbelievable season. How do you look back on it? Oh, it's, I think it's been fantastic from, from day one. Um, we we look back and and we we expected that only really tough season, but I think we the way we played and the way we we showed how how we can play in the, in the Premier League, we we can be here many years. And we saw in part two just there that you did have to spend some time out of the side. Um, how tough was that period for you, and how involved were you still in the group in that period? It was very tough. It was very tough. It was my my first long time injury, and I didn't know how. I was gonna be played in my mind in, in, in the aspect, but I was always been involved with the with the group. Um, I was trying to go into the meetings and, and try and help as much as possible. Uh, but at the start, it was really really tough um, just to not be involved and <clears throat> your whole routine just just changes from from one day to another. Uh, going in a bit later, you finishing like four or five o'clock in in the afternoon. So, uh, but as soon as you get used to it and, and you have your mindset ready to to come back stronger, I think it, it makes it a little bit easier, and especially with the with the staff, uh, medical staff, and and the strength staff, it was uh, much easier. And I imagine naturally, when when you do spend some time out, you get worried about getting your place back. If you you've had an outfield player trying to take your place in goal, haven't you, Vita? Uh, I know he had a goal, a game in goal for Bochum, but what do you make of this from Vitali in goal, David? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After all. that one, <laughs> unorthodox, would you say? He can do a bit better. I think, yeah. I think he needs to be in goal a bit more after training. <laughs> um, help him. Christian, hello. Hello. Um, there's no way of understanding the huge impact you've made since your arrival. Um, you said in our first chat on your first day you just wanted to get back to enjoying playing football. So have you done that? Yeah, I think it, uh, it comes together with winning, of course. And I think since, uh, since I came, take away the first game, I think the, the whole atmosphere around the club has really... Uh, grown on me as a player to get easy to go back into being a footballer. Um, so I know it's been, it's been a very good time. Helps West London's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is. I've been there before, so it's very nice, yeah. yeah we'll, just, we'll just leave it there, shall we? Um, have, have, you got a, uh, have you got a standout moment from the, from the four months so far? Uh, I, have, I have a lot of uh, standout moments. Uh, I, I still think, for me, the, the personal tick was the, the Newcastle game to be, uh, to be back on the pitch and play some professional football again in a... In a lovely stadium with some lovely fans. I mean, it was, uh, was a special day for me to be back. And unsurprisingly, you've become an instant fans' favourite. We absolutely love you here. Um, but how big have the supporters been in helping you to settle in? No, they, they've helped a lot. Um, obviously, the, the fans are at the stadium. You feel the atmosphere. Even the away games has been uh, very warm and uh, very, uh, 
has a good feeling to it. Uh, but of course, I mean, first of all, the, the training group, uh, the guys here, the players, the, the staff at the training ground has really been welcoming and really been easy to join in in everything and, and being part of it. Um, but no, it definitely helps with some good fans and a good fan base, and which you do have. It's not a bad player, is he, David? No, it's not too bad. <laughs> Um, since I joked in the intro, Christian, um, from a player who absolutely pings it about the pitch, how good is David's passing? No, he's, uh, I mean, he's surprised me. A few of the lads has really uh, surprised me. Obviously, I, have, I saw a bit of uh, Brentford before I came, obviously, uh, when I had six months of doing football, as you say. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did see uh, see a few games and I saw how well he played and the general in, in the team in general, but definitely David and for him to get a call up to Spain, I think, uh, I think my money would be on that he'll be a coach or a coach first team goalkeeper yeah. uh, for Spain in a, in a few years time. Well, I know this is a celebration. You've mentioned it there. There were huge moments for both of you at international level. Um, David, you did make your debut for Spain. Give David a big round of applause. You there, lining up before the game. Talk to me about that moment. How special was it? <laughs> <laughs> that moment at, the, at that time was very long. That's when the, the anthem came on and it felt like 10 minutes. Uh, I just, I was running to, to play and uh, obviously it was a very, very special and, and even more that I played at home. Um, it was at the Barcelona, the Espanol Stadium. So um, it was incredible for, for me and, and, and my family, obviously, was, uh, was there and all my friends. So that moment was, was remarkable. It was a, a dream come true. Uh, I think every, every little boy that plays football dreams to, to represent your, uh, your country. And I had the opportunity, so I'm looking, looking forward to, to have more moments, um, moments with the national team. And well, Christian, um, in your case, you made the return to club football. And then not long after, no surprise, you're back in the Denmark squad. What did that mean to you? Uh, yeah, that was uh, extra special. I mean, from the first tick for me, obviously, was to be back to play football and and show I could play football again. Uh, I got that opportunity here with with Brentford, obviously, which was a very positive. But personally, to be back with Denmark was, of course, the the dream that really started everything. Uh, and to be back to show that I'm capable of playing for Denmark again, which was a very special uh, two games. Uh, first in Amsterdam to to score and get a celebration from the home fan was already weird. And then to play in park, I mean, it was, just, uh, yeah, it was very special. Very nice feeling to be back, to get it, everything sorted, like focusing on a football player, which was for me when, uh, was, a good, uh, was a good part. So it was a very nice place. Well, I'm looking forward to watching you both in Qatar at the end of the year. Um, give it up one more time for Christian Eriksson and David Ray, everyone. Right, plenty of awards still to come. But before we find out who has won Goal of the Season, Wister thinks he's got it wrapped up, it's time to look back at some of the funnier moments featuring this man a lot. There's the fun begin. <laughs> Let's go! Hello, Michal. We are Brentford and Umbra is back in China. <laughs> Give us your support. I'm back. What's he doing? <laughs> Just fancy, isn't it? Oh, I definitely love to take Rico's marbles. Yes! Big head, big head, big head. You can see it on his big head. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it me? Hello? Hello, everybody? <laughs> Come on.
fast. It's me now. You know that's yeah. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> what do you do, this? A season then of many highs and a season where 64 goals have been scored from 16 different goal scorers so far from the Premier League to the cup competitions and you know we'll have seen some absolute belters flying in along the way. It's time then for us to give out the goal of the season and to help us do that is someone who knows a thing or two about scoring goals for this club, former Brentford striker turned club ambassador Marcus Gale. <laughs> Marcus, what a season it has been. It's sort of surpassed all expectations, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think from the outside world, we have. But I think internally, I think the message was always positive. We knew that we had a great squad. Uh, and that squad could definitely produce the goods at this, at this level. And there's still another game to go, so we can surprise a few more. But it's been a brilliant season for, for all that, you know, connected to the club. Yeah, and just as club ambassador... How has your role changed now that we're in the Premier League? Um, it's gotten busier. Yeah. There's a lot of things to be done now. Um, the club's put people in place to, to help make this club a great one and one that can be um, celebrated as well. So um, my, my time's gone from part-time to full-time mm -hmm. by the start of the season. Yeah. So I, I'm enjoying it. I've never thought I'd, I'd be working you know, in an office. Um, but here I am. I'm loving it. And um, we've seen some cracking goals this season. What's your favourite would you say? Oh my favourite, uh, there were some great goals in there, Wiss is up there but for me I would go with uh, Vitali's second at, at Chelsea. Chelsea. I just think the build up play, you know the connection with the front two, Ivan and Brian and then the deft pass by Ivan just to put him through and that little chip, mm. especially at Stamford Bridge as well, that was special but it's not down to me, it's no. about you guys out there, what do you think? Well, here's a reminder from all of this. Running round out on the back streets, jumped in a taxi, went straight to town, got out the acne. The girls call party to climb the time. She told you I don't like it anymore. She takes it time behind the bar and orders in a couple more. Well, I just don't. She goes, I just don't. She knows. I really like it when I wake up. My sheets are filled with makeup. You're lying there to sleep again. So knocks him clean on his back now. He's flat now. He's fleeing from the sea. He's running round out on the back streets. Try to find a taxi and get out of town. Then here comes Patsy, jumps in the back seat, singing. There she goes. Oh, there she goes. I really like it when I wake up. My sheets are filled with makeup. You're lying. When I wake up, my sheets are filled with makeup. We're lying there to sleep again. 
the shortlist but who is the winner to present the award for our goal of the season Nikki Chenery from our official sleeve sponsor Safety Culture joins us I am delighted to announce that the goal of the season goes to Sergio Canas versus Arsenal <laughs> Well, let's just remind everybody once again why this goal was chosen as our goal of the season. Here comes Canos. Oh! Brentford are off and running. Sergi Canos. Canos can for sure in the Premier League. So I know, Sergi, you thought Vitaly would win, but you've been chosen as our winner. Take us back then to that moment when you pick up the ball, the ball even. Um, what are you thinking, if you can remember? Well, obviously, I mean, I was thinking that I was hoping he was going to open the legs a little bit. Because <laughs> I know, you know, David, is, David and Alvaro, they are like my best friends in the, in the team. And I know how difficult those... <laughs> Ivan, you are up there also. I know, I know how difficult uh, those balls for the keeper are. So once it goes through the legs, it's very difficult mm. for the keeper. Had it been on your mind at all to be that first Premier League goal scorer for no. Brentford? No. No, but it's an honour, you know. Yeah. It's a pleasure to, you know, to, you know, it's my also my first goal in the Premier League also, and uh, to be, uh, to be there, you know, my name uh, the first. And for Premier League goal, then it's a, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it will go down in history as our, our first ever Premier League goal. Tell me, what were your nerves like before that game? Were there any nerves or were you just excited? There were nerves, yeah, of course, uh, because, you know, we had a, a really good pre-season. We played some really good games, but, you know, that game, that first game in the Premier League against, you know, Arsenal, uh, a top team, you always have that, uh, you know, feeling that oh, will I be, will I be good for this? Will I? But I think after the five minutes, uh, we started pressing and running like, <laughs> uh, and yeah, we we showed that we we could be there. Just very quickly, do you understand the rules of guess who now? I do. I yeah. Do. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was that was a highlight of mine this season. Um, everybody, Sergi Canos, our goal of the season winner. Thanks also to Marcus Gale and also to Nikki Chenery from Safety Culture. That's right, get in front of the camera. OK, the last few months of the season saw the bees go on a run that secured our Premier League status. From ensuring no London club would do the double over us to beating Everton home and away. There was lots to cheer about and of course we'll all remember where we were when we put four past Chelsea. London is waiting. The Brentford Community Stadium is primed. Ericsson looks like lasting the 90 again. A teasing cross! And that is the delivery they've been waiting for! Ivan Tony strikes again! Ivan Tony to finish it. There's a big shove in the back. What's he going to do? He hasn't pointed to the spot. He will in a minute. Red card. Thomas Frank has called Ivan Tony the best penalty taker in the world right now. What can he do here? He can confirm it. In it goes. And Brentford have a big three points. Ivan Tony at the double. Chelsea.
Chelsea aim to extend their five-game winning run against West London neighbours who gave them a tough time in their first meeting back in October. Boumau. Oh, what an equaliser from Vitaly Janelt. Oh, sensational from Brentford now. Boumau has given Ziyech the slip. Ericsson alongside, joined by Tony. It's Ericsson! They've turned it around. And Christian Ericsson has come back to Stamford Bridge to haunt Chelsea with Brentford, just as he did with Tottenham Hotspur. Tony. Yannolt again. What a finish that was. And it's a second for Vitaly Yannolt. Extraordinary. Tinnock won the header. Visser! Can you believe it? And what a day this has been for Brentford and Thomas Frank at Stamford Bridge. One of the standout performances of the season. One of the results of the season. Mixing it with the big capital teams. Brentford is very close to safety in the Premier League. That's a great ball from Ivan Tony. When it comes to double acts, you've got your Anton Dex, your Morecambe and Wise, your Bang and Olufsen, Liam Perrins, but none of them have got a patch on these two. Ivan, Tony and Brian and Buemo, everyone. Um, right, lads, before we start, I want to clear something up because on social media, you call him my son. You call him my son. Without going all Jeremy Kyle, who's whose son here? <laughs> my 
think he's my son. <laughs> How does that work? You're younger than him. Is that you're right with that, Ivan? He's my son. He knows, you know. <laughs> right. I, I, let's just leave it there, right? But seriously, why do you think this brilliant partnership works so well, Ivan? Um, because we know each other's game. Uh, from the f first minute I walked in, we kind of we got on very well, and I feel like playing with each other just it just built built up, and we get we get along so well. His banner's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Do you ever argue? Instead of, yeah. <laughs> no, not really. No? Nah. Sometimes. <laughs> what do you argue about? <laughs> it's private. It's private. <laughs> it's not. If I don't pass him, he gets angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's Brian's best quality, Ivan? Um, his pace. I don't think he realised how fast he actually is. Yeah. So I play the balls into space and he runs onto do you want to return the favour? What's Ivan's best quality? Um, I think it's the coolness on the every situation. Yeah. Think. And um, you've both scored a lot of goals this season, of course. Have you got a favourite of each? Maybe you've got a favourite of the others, but what are your favourite goals that one of you scored at least, Brian? Um, I think it's my first Premier League goal. But, uh, yeah, I just came and haven't passed me the ball. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Ivan? Yes, yeah, oh, I think everyone's going to be the first Premier League goal. <laughs> mine, mine was the one against Aston Villa. Obviously, my family was there to witness that, so that was a big, big moment for me in my career. And um, you're both probably the first and second best penalty takers in the world. I'm not going to say which one's which, but uh, uh, Ivan, we just saw you put in a couple past Vita. He reckons, though, that he saved one of yours. There's no footage of this. There you go. Convenient. <laughs> but, right, but I know you're an honest man, is what I was going to say. I know you're an honest man, so now you've got cameras, everyone in this room. And he's right there. Did Vitali save one of your penalties? No, he's never saved one of my penalties. He's never. <laughs> Vita? <laughs> yeah, so you've just got peace of mind that you know. Um, you, you are the coolest penalty taker I've ever seen, Ivan. What goes through your mind when you're waiting for that whistle to blow? Um, it's just, just wait for the keeper to make the move, really. Um, I feel like you've got to be brave to do it. And obviously teaching Brian as well. <laughs> he's, Your son. He's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> he's mastered it as well. So it's just about, like you said, being, being cool and making the keeper make the move. And if he doesn't, you've got to pick a side to pull it. Yeah. Um, you're both always amongst the banter in the squad. Who's the funniest out of the two of you? <laughs> <laughs> that look says it all. You? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny squad. It's a funny squad. That's, people are funny in their own way. Yeah. I think, uh, unsurprisingly, Frankie is, is, is up there. Yeah. But you don't know he's funny, so that's, that's <laughs> the funny part of life. <laughs> that's always the best. Um, as we look back at this remarkable year, what have, what have been the highlights for you both, starting with you, Brian? Um, I think the... Like, I don't have, like, one moment who is... Uh, like, I like, I think the whole journey we, we, we've been doing uh, this year was unbelievable. And uh, yeah, just sharing this year with the, my teammates and the whole staff, the fans, was uh, very good. And uh, yeah. Ivan? I think the highlight of the year has been that we go into games, everyone looks at us as being underdogs. I think throughout the season, people know that they can't take us too lightly. And we definitely proved that on the pitch. And it shows where we are in the, in the, in the league that we, we, we go into every game knowing that we can win the game if we work hard. And that's, that's, that shows and throughout the whole team, whether it's you're starting or you're on the bench or you're not in the squad, everyone's played their part. So everyone should be very proud. Amazing, amazing. Well, look, give it up one last time for Ivan Tony and his son, Brian Buemo. <laughs> right, two awards to go. And first up is the player's player. Happy with both of your votes, lads, yeah? Both for each other, I take it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, right, before we dish out the award, though, let's hear from the man on the mic on match days, Mr Brentford himself, Peter Gillam. Uh, before I start, I just want to check about the backdrop. <laughs> I get frightened about green backdrop. Sorry about that. Um, there have been many attempts to scale the heights and reach the summit. But after decades of struggle and heartbreak, on the 29th of May, history was at long last able to record 
that Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay were the first climbers ever to scale the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. Fast forward 68 years from that same day in 1953 to the 29th of May of last year, and a similar feat took place at Wembley Stadium. It may not quite have been as historically significant, but it had taken some 74 years to achieve. But as we know, at this particular bus stop in Hounslow, you can wait for ages until what you're waiting for comes along. When we played our last game in what was then the top division back on the 26th of May 1947, we played Arsenal, not realising then how long we would have to wait to make up our one nil home defeat that particular day. I was eight weeks old at the time, and until the 29th of May last year, I always felt responsible for our apparent demise. So you can imagine how I felt when our inspirational captain, Pontus Janssen, in what must have been an incredible personal moment of achievement for him, turned to me and asked me to lift the championship playoff winner's trophy with him. It meant the world to me, and I like to think that at that moment, I was representing every Beavs fan out there, as we fans, like the players, the coaching football and the admin staff, the directors, and indeed everybody, are an integral part of this very special club. Well over 1,000 players have worn the red and white of Brentford, and during that time, we've been blessed with many players who've achieved international recognition and national acclaim. But with all due respect, it's fair to say that very few could compete with the quality that is now apparent throughout our incredible squad. This past season, we were receiving over 20 international call-ups at each international break at both first team and B team level. This season thus far, there have been so many high points. Our opening victory versus Arsenal, watched by over one billion worldwide. Our first Premier away win at Wolves, the 3-3 draw against Liverpool. Our last minute win over Watford with Pontus scoring his first Premier goal and everyone wondering what would happen as Ivan wasn't there to take the penalty. And then up steps Brian. And of course, a line that I thought I would never say, our 4-1 thrashing of World Club champions and Champions League winners, Chelsea. As for low points, to me there weren't any. We are competing in the Premier League, and when I say competing, we're actually doing more than that. We're showing the football world everything that's best in our national game, both on and off the pitch. The unseen but crucial backup team of themselves Premier in all aspects. The, prayer, the players rightly receive plaudits from opponents and football writers alike. Whilst in Thomas Frank, we have the epitome of how we wish all head coaches and managers were. Honest, not to mention, as in Tom's case, extremely likeable and exceptionally talented. In the gesture, we have an amazing support base, who, when on their travels, have managed to outsing every set of home fans, be it at Old Trafford, St James's Park, Anfield, or indeed whenever, or wherever. And then, of course, we must have the best post-match atmosphere, with free from desire, even getting septuagenarians thrown a few shapes. This is truly an exceptional club, and it's been an incredible and amazing season, but I believe it's just the start. We may be living the dream, but this dream, even when being interrupted by fireworks at 3.30 in the morning, is now very much a reality. Long may it continue. Peter Gillam, everyone. So we are down to the final two awards and right now we are focusing on the Players Player of the Year award. In a season where we upset the odds, not smart odds of course, our Premier League debut earned plenty of plaudits and caused a fair few shocks along the way. So who will the players have picked as their standout performer, their Mr Reliable, their MVP? Please put your hands together for Carl Alexander from our official technical partner Umbro who will reveal the winner. Gentlemen, uh, your players' player of the year is Mr. Christian Norgard. Well, unfortunately, Christian can't be here this evening. He's very prompt. Uh, Captain Pontus Janssen has joined us on the stage to collect this award, which is very big, so bear with me. Uh, this is the trophy. And while you're being presented with that, let's just look back at some of Christian Norgard's highlights.
like I said, Christian can't be with us this evening for family reasons, but Pontus, you've gratefully accepted this on his behalf. Is he a worthy winner? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I gave him my vote. Uh, even though he's my best friend, I would probably still give it a vote. If, if he wasn't, <laughs> no problem. But uh, yeah, I mean, since I came to this club, I always call him like the Mr. MVP. And I think that's, that's really how it is. He's so important for his football quality, but also as a person, he's a fantastic guy. Interesting, when you mention him as a person, and we all see what he can do on the pitch. Formidable, wonderful, 109 tackles that he's won this season, which puts him at the top of the list. But what's he like then off the pitch? Yeah, he's one of the leaders. For me as a captain, he makes it easy for me to, to lead, to help the boys and to guide the boys. Though he guides me, uh, that's really how it is. He's, he's calm, uh, experienced, um, and of course he earns respect because he's such a good footballer. Um, so I'm very happy that he won this award. Yeah. And just quickly, let me say that he guides you. Obviously somebody that you turn to if you ever need... Because it's funny to say, as a skipper, you wouldn't necessarily think you would need to lean on somebody, but you do every now and then. Um, but I mean, I haven't been skipper or captain before, before I joined Brentford. And um, from day one, Thomas invited me and, and Christian to, to be tied together, and he helped me from, from day one. And um, yeah, like I said, he's younger than me, but sometimes it feels like he's my, my bigger brother. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, a fantastic guy, fantastic leader, and yeah, once again, a fantastic football player. Well, Pontus, I know you're going to be busy because you're going to be on the sofa in just a moment. But for now, thank you, thank you. very much for picking up that award for Thanks. Christian Norgard, who is the player's player. Thank you. The player's player of the season. Now, if ever there is a manager that has truly got what we are as a club, who has built a connection between us all and has played a massive part in this journey to the Premier League, then it is Thomas Frank. What a lovely evening, huh? <laughs> And now I'm joined by the man himself with the skipper, Pontus Janssen, everyone. Um, Thomas, I'm going to go to you first. What are your emotions sat here as head coach of this group? And I extend that to the whole room here. Very emotional. I think um, when you watch through the, the clips and, uh, and the season, yeah, it's, it's been remarkable. Um, these players have put so much into it, staff put so much into it, um, on and off the pitch, the fans have been amazing. Um, and I've been here a, f a few years, so uh, for Sergi to score the first goal, I think he's been here five years. You know, very emotional building some, you, you know, you build relationship. I think it's all about building relationship. And um, of course, it's hard to disappoint people sometimes, but that's part of the job. But unbelievable journey. Pontus, as a skipper, what about yourself? Yeah, I just fill into with every word that Thomas said. It's been such a such a season, uh, ups and downs, uh, but uh, yeah, what a journey. Thomas, has this season surpassed any expectations at all that you had going into it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember before the season we we started. I had a I had a big feeling that we could do something. We could be. Uh, as a true Premier League, we could, we could attack it. Uh, I didn't really didn't know where that could take us. Uh, I'm glad that we never talked about survival or just staying up. We wanted to end as high as possible and, and focus on the next game. And I think that's been been the mantra. Uh, I think we've been blessed with some last-minute winners. It's not often you do that. Uh, someone told me a stat that we. Uh, just be behind Liverpool, the one who turned, you know, coming from behind and, and winning 15 points that for, for promoted side is, is unbelievable. I think um, the home crowd, the fans, been fantastic. Yeah, I think we've been privileged. And Pontus, I know it's a bit awkward as he's sat right there, but what, what's <laughs> it like working under a head coach like Thomas? 
I mean, first, I mean, he's one of the reasons why I came to this club, uh, first of all. And I think Thomas also, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas also over those two years together developed a lot as a person, but also as a coach. Um, so yeah, he impressed me a lot <laughs> as a football <laughs> coach. But no, it's been been a journey for him as well. I mean, he came, or yeah, when I came, he was a coach in a championship championship club, where now he's a Premier League coach. So also he has done a fantastic journey. So um, yeah, and we players, of course, have helped him to do that. Uh, can't forget that, but I think, to be honest, he has grown a lot as a, as a, as a person, but also as a football coach. Yeah. And Thomas, what about Pontus as a skipper? Good, very good. Um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, uh, we said that before, I think we all grow. I think Pontus went, went nailing it. You know, one, no one can do it al alone, no one. Um, if you are the captain, uh, we, you still need to have someone that can help you. Yes, I'm the head coach, you know, I can't do it without uh, my staff, the players. No one can do it alone. Um, but uh, no, it's it's been good. I'm glad that Pontus finally stepped up and decided to score some goals, you know. <laughs> okay. I clearly remember when we, okay, we can sign Pontus Janssen. Oh yeah, he's good on set pieces. <laughs> the first two seasons he couldn't, you know, I, I don't think he had a chance, but uh, this season, three goals, so uh, very, very pleased. We'll get on to that in a sec, Pontus. You mentioned them just there, Thomas, and I know you're not only proud of, of the playing side of things and, and the squad, but the incredible backroom staff that you've got here. Um, a lot of them are in the room today, so how key are they in regards to the success and, and what we've achieved this year? Yeah, of course, um, crucial. Um, I think, I, I remember a couple of years I said it to um, a Christmas dude, that was before COVID, so uh, that, that in a few years time, when we look back after a long career, we'll remember the time at Brentford. Um, and that's because that every person, and uh, now we're talking about the staff, Good persons, good people that just want to help, and um, not not only working for themselves, but her working for for a bigger purpose, um, big quality. Uh, we're speaking a little bit about players be, before, but also staff. I think we had zero experience going into the Premier League. It didn't concern me. I knew the players were good enough. They showed it. I knew the staff were good enough. Nobody just no nobody knew from from the outside. Yeah. So I think I think they've done fantastic. And um, right, Pontus, we've got to talk about it then, haven't we? Are we now calling you a prolific centre half, three goals this season. Mm -hmm. um, what few assist? Well, how few many assist, assists? Yeah. And, yeah, well, I think also if you look, yeah, Matthew here expected goals. I think I'm, I'm very high, <laughs> so <laughs> I've been a threat through through the whole season. So yeah, I'm happy with that. What was that feeling like? Obviously, for the Watford game when you've scored, but there's that long wait and no one really knows what's going on. Yeah, first of all, I never scored a goal with VAR before, and it was like three years since I scored a goal before that. So uh, it was like, yeah, should I celebrate? What should I do? It was 1-1 at home, we wanted to win, so of course I wanted to go back and score 2-1. So a lot of things in my head. Um, but yeah, uh, it was, was nice, of course. And, but yeah, I've only scored important goals, so that's also <laughs> important to mention. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's not so much about the goal, it's more about helping the team. I think that's, yeah. that's the thing. You've definitely done that. And another stat that's really impressive, 178 clearances in the Premier League, which is the, the highest out of any other player in the league. I said this to you before, that I think you're playing even better than ever this year. How, how have you found the step up? Um, I mean, I doubt myself a little bit before the season because when you go into something new, you like you ask, like, am, am I good enough for this? Uh, me personal, but also us as a team, like, how good are we? I'm not starting to doubt us, but I, like, went in with, like, how, how good are we? And that was the same for me personal. Um, but the most important for me, I think I've been fit the whole season. I haven't missed yeah, more than one game, no injuries, um, be able to train well, consistent, um, worked very hard. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, clearances, I will work a lot with Brian, our defensive, uh, defensive call. He don't like my clearances, but at least I touch the ball. That's <laughs> he, he gets so angry. He gets so angry. Uh, no, he has high demands, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, demands of me, so yeah. I, I like that. But yeah, it's been, been a good season on personal level as well. And talk to me about this is what it means, because that phrase for me at Watford, it, it summed up the whole season. I don't know. It was such an iconic moment in the year. Where did, where did that come from? I don't know. It's just when I play football on the pitch, I, I say, and say and do very weird things. <laughs> um, probably just what, what, what came out from my, from my head. Like, I mean, I've said it before. I, I, I am here in this country of one reason, and that's playing football for Brentford. And I love every moment of it. And I put everything I have into it and done it from, from day one. Yeah. And of course, with, with the, what happened in the past, losing the playoff finals and so on, 
that was hard. I took it very hard, of course, where we are now, where the club are now in Premier League, secured a new contract, and like I said, we can also end in top half. Of course, that means a lot to me. Uh, it means a lot to everyone, of course. But yeah, like because I put so much into this. Yeah, I'm just feeling feeling so happy, and yeah, this is what it means. That's that's really what it is. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's such a special moment with the with the supporters there, and we've asked them for some questions for the two of you tonight. Always risky, um, but I've been promised they have been vetted already. So, uh, first is actually to yourself, Pontus. It's from Joe McGrath, and it's can you actually do any magic tricks? Magic tricks. Yeah. With the football, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. The freestyle battle, you Chris Adji, yeah? Yeah, but uh, that was ridiculous. Like, they have to, the media guys, I want to sack this guy that made this media, seriously. Luke Gregory, he's been pulled out. It's his birthday as well today. I'm, I'm the captain, you have to show a little bit of respect when you put out things. Uh, so I said to Christopher one day, when, when we can, when I swear that we have to go out, just me and him, and then with normal shoes as well, so we can do the proper things, and then we will see who's You'll the best. You'll beat him then. I will beat him for sure, yeah. Um, Thomas, this is from Owen Green. Um, is there anything you would do differently this season? Oh, that's a good that's question. A deep question for an end of season of Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've been quite good, uh, I think. So. Uh, uh, do you want one about wine instead? What, sorry? About wine instead? How many glasses of red have you toasted to the uh, season so uh, far? How many games have we won? <laughs> so one for every week. Yeah. Um, and, and finally, who is the biggest influences on, on both of your careers from Carl Foot? So first to you, Pontus. <sighs> That's a good question. Big uh, question. Yeah. Uh, I would say Pontus, of course. Yeah. And you would say, and you would say Thomas. So yeah. No, no. Tom, Thomas has changed my career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, family, I yeah. would say. Yeah. Uh, wife, have to say. And yeah. I also want to say. Yeah. No, I also, no, seriously, also. Well recovered, mate, well recovered. Also, also want to say, and also my, my kids, my daughter, yeah. really, she, she changed my life. I used to be a, a problem around football. People, people saw me as a problem, but after I got my, my little girl, like, I changed as a person as well. Also, the, the arm, armband helped me to, yeah. to change into a better person, but yeah, my, my little daughter as well. Amazing. Look, Thomas, they were the sports questions. The supporters love you. Uh, I know you love them as well. Have you got a message? for them watching tonight? Um, thank you. I think they've been amazing. I think we, we or they, have created an unbelievable atmosphere at, um, at our home ground. Um, when they travel away, fantastic atmosphere. Uh, you know, actually went to Anfield, and you know, no disrespect, you know, it's an iconic place. And the, the fans you could hear in the beginning were, were our, our, our fans. So I think that tells a lot about them. Uh, they are unbelievable proud. I, I know they're proud. Um, I think it's 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 very special what we've experienced right now. I think the journey we've been on. Uh, we just you know I think uh, Bernardo told me the other day that we played 100 games in less than two years, uh, and starting with losing a playoff final, uh, going into a season with COVID, winning the playoff final, and now now we're here with a very successful uh, first season in Premier League and because we do it together and let's include the fans. Amazing, well, give it again for Thomas Frank and the skipper, Pontus Janssen. Um, as Thomas said there, you've been superb all season, non-stop backing from when the doors opened against Arsenal. Hey Jude, he's had a new lease of life and fans all over the world have been watching on in awe at the atmosphere he's created home and away. And don't even get me started on Free From Desire. So let's look at you guys at home's best bits.
Well, you, the fans, have been the 12th man every step of the way this season, and you've had your say in the voting for our final award of the evening, the Supporters Player of the Year. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But first, a very quick word from our chairman, Cliff Crown. Good evening, everyone. At the last Player of the Year Awards event back in August 2020, I said, and I quote, I have never been more convinced that our time will come next season and without the need to go through the agony of the playoffs. Well, at the 10th time of asking, it was ecstasy and not agony. And boy, did we celebrate that night. It continues to be both an honour and a privilege to be addressing you all as chair of Brentford Football Club, the 50th club to play in the Premier League and our first in top flight football for 74 years. What an incredible experience it has been. Mixing it with the big boys and giving a fair few of them a run for their money. And this from a team who were the pundit's favourites to be relegated. We knew different. Who can ever forget that magical night under lights when we were invited to commence the 2021-22 season with a live televised home game against Arsenal. Our first ever game in our new stadium in front of a full house and a quite brilliant 2-0 win. We had truly arrived and those early weeks with stirring performances against West Ham, Liverpool and Chelsea, to name but three, signalled our intention to play a positive role in the Premier League on the pitch. Off the pitch, the welcome everyone receives at Brentford is the warmest and the best. So much so that a recent fan survey voted Brentford as the best match day experience in the Premier League. As Matthew Saeed wrote in the Times last week, when a club does its job right, there is a ripple effect that extends out from the stadium and into the wider community. I could not have put it better, and it epitomises the impact the club and the trust have on the local area and all the great work we do to support the people of Hounslow and its surrounding boroughs. We were also thrilled to be voted Sports Organisation of the Year at the 2022 Sports Industry Awards, an accolade, I may say, that is truly deserved and a wonderful recognition of the hard work and effort put in by the entire on and off field staff throughout the club. Thank you to each and every one of you. As the season draws to a close, I can reflect with great pride on the contribution we have made. And with another season in the Premier League secured, we can build on the foundations that we have laid. I'd also like to congratulate the B team for winning the London Senior Cup for the first time since 1898. Wow. wow. And I want to also congratulate our two women's teams and wish the women's B team good luck in their final on Sunday. Finally, I recently came across a newspaper article published on the 1st of August 2013 with the headline, Brentford's new chairman aiming for the Premier League. No doubt it would have been taken with a pinch of salt as a League One club back then, but eight years later, it became a reality. So as I approach the start of my 10th year as club chair, I see no reason now why we should not be aiming for Europe and not within a, dis a, si a dissimilar timescale. I hope you've all enjoyed the season as much as Matthew, the board, players and staff have. In closing, I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank Matthew, all the players, the staff, the board, and in particular, our CEO, John Varney, who has led us brilliantly during what I know many of you agree has been the best year of our footballing lives. 
And finally, a special mention to you, our magnificent fans. Your contribution has been immense. The away support traveling in your thousands and the atmosphere you create inside the Brentford Community Stadium. Together, we can look forward to the future with great optimism. Thank you. Cliff Crown, everyone. So it's time to reveal our final award of the night. Please welcome from our principal sponsor, Hollywood Beck, Brendan O'Connell. It gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the Supporters Player of the Year. And that goes to Christian Norgard. Well, as you know, Christian is not here, but Pontus once again. It's another big trophy, I'm afraid. Thank there you. we go. Um, let's just remind ourselves once again why he is your Supporters Player of the Year. <laughs> So Christian Norgard is the Supporters Player of the Year. And I know, Pontus, you've already spoken about Christian Norgard, so we won't talk about him. We'll talk about the fans and just how important they have been this season. We've, we've heard Jamie Carragher and, and Gary Neville talk glowingly uh, about Brentford Community Stadium when the fans get rocking. But they can be pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, we, all, we and Tom especially always mention the fans as in a part of our game plans, like to get them going, to get them with us, especially at home. Uh, and, and throughout the season, they have been unbelievable. I think we set the tone in the first game against Arsenal to get them with us. And since then, it's been, uh, it's been unbelievable. And hopefully they can, <laughs> can be with us for, for the coming years as well. well and I mean, Sunday, very important game. Yeah, exactly. Sunday is a massively important game. We've still got that one game to go. You're quite right to mention that. And, and not... Look, it's been sold out at the Brentford Community Stadium, sold out away ends as well. Any standout moment for you when it comes to those fans and, and things that you might have shared with them? Yeah, I don't know if it's Premier League or if it's us, but I remember one of my first away games against Barnsley or something. It was like 50 persons there. Mm -hmm. And now we have two, 3,000 travelling to Newcastle and, and so on. So, yeah, it's, it's fair enough. It's great to them. I think it's also great to us that we play an, an entertaining football and performing, of course, now in Premier League instead of Championship. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's great to both of us, us and them. Well, let me just say a big thank you to Pontus Janssen for picking up the award on behalf of Christian Norgard. Also, big thanks to Cliff Crown and to Brendan O'Connell as well. Your supporters then, player of the season, he won the double, is Christian Norgard. <laughs> Uh, what a season it has been from that first Friday night in August when it all got underway to where we are here now. As Pontus has said, there's only one more game to go and we still need you to be that special voice on Sunday as we look to finish the season strongly. And the good news is we don't have to wait too long <laughs> as we'll be back for our second season in the Premier Yay. League as the new season kicks off in just 80 days time. Thank you very much to Blue Jeans, the artists who have kindly donated music to all our club sponsors and to Sky for being our hosts tonight. And of course, to everyone here in the room today, and most importantly, all of you watching at home, thank you and thanks for all your support this season. <laughs>